Now come here, boy. Tell me what took place. Did you go down there on your own or was someone in your face? Cause if you went down to that altar, boy, just to please a friend, there's a pretty good chance it didn't take and you ain't born again. But if you feel within your soul you got it through and through, come stand before me now, boy, and I'll tell you what to do. You go tell it on the mountaintop and take it into town. You've won the chosen few award. Go spread the word around. Go spread the word around, boy. Spread the word around. Take it to the mountaintop and take it into town. You may not sing the perfect song or preach like Billy Graham. But as a member of the chosen few, you gotta spread the word.
at those nail scar hands and ask himself why I just can't comprehend how such love could flow I don't understand but all I need to know is he loves me
This is a true story if I had to die where I'm standing. Whenever, whenever I was a boy, uh, we was very poor. I was born there during the Depression. And like all boys, there's things in my life I wanted real bad. My case, I wanted a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows how bad I wanted a monkey. I saw a movie where a guy went around with a monkey on his shoulder. And so, so I never had a, needless to say, I never had a monkey. Well, one time I did have a possum. <laughs> Possums are real dumb, and you can't get them to stand on your shoulder. They can't even get across the road. But... <laughs> more, th more than anything in the world, I want to... So when Ronnie came to live with me after I got out of the Marines, I was just a kid myself, he came to live with me, and then me and Melba got married. We were both determined to make that boy feel like this is where he lived, this was home. And I tried to buy him things that sometimes I didn't have the money to buy. But, but I wanted to get him a monkey because I never had a monkey. <laughs> and I saw this ad, this ad in the paper. It said, pet monkey for sale. 
And I got the address, me and old Ronald got in the car, and we took off, and we went to this lady's house, and she came to the door with this darling monkey in her arms with its arms around her neck. And she told us she had to move away. She couldn't take the monkey. How it's like one of the family, the whole bit. And, 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 and I paid her for it. And I said, okay, Ronnie, you got something I never had. Take your monkey. <laughs> and the lady said, the lady said, you don't know how it hurts me to lose this monkey. Let me just take him to the car. Found out later why she wanted to take him to the car. But <laughs> we went to the car. And I told old Ronald, I said, get in, get in the back seat where you have room to play with your monkey. And, <laughs> and so the lady, so, so, the, so the lady was trying to hand him the monkey and the monkey kept holding on. I worried about that, but she finally pulled him loose and got him in old Ronald's lap. Now if I had to die, this is the truth. And she closed the door. Well. In the very beginning, the monkey just kind of drove up like this, you know, in a little knock. We got about a half a mile up the road, and I heard the awfulest noise I ever heard in my life. It just went like, <laughs> and, 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 and I jumped and I turned around and looked in the back seat, and when I looked around, there sat Ronnie with his hair parted right down the middle. He was all glassy eyed looking. He looked, he looked like he saw his first zombie come out of a grave or something, and I couldn't see the monkey. The monkey wasn't there. And, and then all at once, almost instantly, after I saw Ronnie, that monkey come up the, my shoulder on the side where the door is in the car, on the driver's side, come up, take it, hide and all as he went, and, and parted my hair down the middle from the back. <laughs> he went over my head and on the dashboard. Now, I like to die. It scared, it, it scared me so bad, I absolutely like to die. And, 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 and there I was, you know, he's going down the road in a car. And there he sat on the dashboard. And, and he just kept looking at me, and his teeth would come out, and he'd go, <laughs> And every time he'd go, <laughs> he'd, get, he'd get a little bit closer to me. And the last time he went, <laughs> he slapped my hair again. And I slammed on the brakes of the car, slammed his little body into the windshield. And, and stopped the car, and I jumped out of the car on the driver's side. Well, old Ronald bailed out on, on his side in the back. And we was just standing there outside the car. I didn't know what to do. And so, so I said, what are we going to do, Ronald? And he said, I don't know. I, I said, I'm scared to get back in the car. He said, I am too. I said, I'll tell you what you do. Go get a stick. <laughs> in the woods, the little edge of the woods there. Go, you go get a stick. It's got a point on it. And stick him. And I'll open this other back door. And you stick him so he'll jump out of the car. And Ron said, if I do that, he'll get away. I said, I certainly hope so. <laughs> So Ronnie got the stick, and he started sticking the monkey. And every time he'd stick that monkey, that monkey would get in a tighter ball. He, and he got in the floorboard, the back, he done jumped back over the seat, got down in the floorboard of that car, and just rolled up in a ball. And old Ronnie would stick him with a stick, and, and he wouldn't come out. And we stuck him and stuck him. And so I said, okay, let me tell you what let's do. Let's close these back doors. And, and me and you will ease in the front. <laughs> Maybe he's going to stay down in that floorboard and we get him home, we figure out what to do with him. But I said, first of all, I said, I want you to go back over there in the woods. And this time, I want you to get a big old stick. <laughs> I want you to try to find a stick about the size of a baseball bat. <laughs> and when we get back in the car, I said, I want you to kneel in the front seat, face in the back. And if he comes up out of that floorboard, I want you to hit him in the head as hard as you can hit him. I said, now I know how fast he is, so if you can't hit him in the head, you hit me in the head. Because I want to be unconscious when that monkey comes up my back the next time. 
this is a fact what I'm telling you. If I had to die, Ron is here tonight. He, he'll verify this. We, 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 we got the monkey home. We don't know how, but we got the monkey home. We got him home. I said, how are we going to get him out? So one of the neighbors come over, and then two or three of the neighbors come over. I told him, I said, we got King Kong in the car here. And, we, <laughs> and, and I said, I said we, we, don't know, we don't know how to get him out. So, so one of the neighbors said, get a big blanket. I'll show you how to get him out. So, and this is a fact, what I'm telling you, if I had to die. We took this big old blanket, two or three of our neighbors. We got over there and we held that blanket. We opened the door. We held a blanket over there on that side. And then some more of us, the neighbors, got over on the other side of the car and started banging on the side of the car. We started banging on the side of the car. The junkie, the, the monkey... <laughs> I had my nose fixed, now my mouth won't work. <laughs> the, monkey, the monkey jumped in the blanket, and then we closed it right quick and tied it up and took him in the house. And old member started screaming, what are you going to do with that monkey? I said, going to take him in the house. You ain't taking no monkey in my house. I said, member, we got to take him in the house. We ain't got no pen yet. We took him in the house and put him in Ronald's room. <laughs> I ain't never seen nothing like this monkey. He absolutely devastated that room. He tore down the curtains. He tore up the spread. He tore up the roof. He even tore up the ceiling. And, 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 and we just closed the door. We didn't know what to do. And, and the guy next door said, let me tell you what to do. You call. It's a big pet shop over near Ponce Leon. I said, you call. And they got a, a, a guy over there, I believe, and know what to do. So I called and I talked to this authority. And he said, oh, yeah, you don't, you don't have a problem there. He said, uh, I, I, it won't cost you much. I'll come out. I'll get the monkey out. You get a pen built. I'll get the monkey out. And we'll put the monkey in a pen, and he'll get to knowing you later. So he, he came over. We got, went, went and got a pen. He came over, got the monkey out. We got out of the house. I don't know how he got the monkey out. He got the monkey out, put him in the pen. Then he said, now, I'm going to tell you what you're going to have to do. He said, this monkey's grown. He said, you're going to you're gonna have to go get another monkey. <laughs> he said, he said, you're going to have to get this monkey a mate. And then this monkey going to calm down. And the first thing you know, you're going to be carrying that monkey around on your shoulder. I said, I can't now. My shoulder's all skinned up. But I said, <laughs> he said, he said, he said, you do that and you'll be all right. Let me tell you all something. And this is the truth. If I had to die right where I'm standing, it never one time entered my mind if that monkey we had was a boy or a girl. <laughs> it's hard to tell when something's coming up your back. <laughs> we got, we went, he told us where a big pet shop was where they had a, a lot of monkeys. So we, we went over there, and when we got over there, I did not know where the monkey we bought was a boy or a girl. We just saw a monkey, and I said, how much is that monkey? And he told me, and I bought the monkey. We brought the monkey home. This monkey is a little bit bigger than the first monkey. We, we put that monkey in that pen, and honey, I have never seen anything to beat it in my life. You could not tell which monkey was on top, which monkey was on the bottom. There's going around in a circle like this, and hair flying everywhere. And they, they fought. First of all, it scared me and old Ronald to death. I started screaming at Ronald. I said, Ronald, he's killing your monkey. <laughs> I said, get your monkey out of there. <laughs> and old Ronald said, you get your monkey out of there. <laughs> I said, I ain't got no monkey. <laughs> I said, I bought both of them monkeys for you. <laughs> when that fight was over, Rollins monkey, lay a corpse. <laughs> he went on to where the good monkeys go. And I'm gonna tell you something, he, he'll tell you to this day, after being in that awful war, and I was in the middle of the worst of it, I, I, just, I just, tears just poured out of my eyes, that nearly killed me. Listen, I can't even put a minnow on a hook. <laughs> my heart's so soft, I can't put a worm on a hook. People say it don't hurt them, they wiggle them. I can't even put a minnow on a hook. And there, there I was, caused the death of a monkey. I didn't like that monkey, but I didn't want him to die. 
So Ronald said, what are we going to do? He said, I believe my monkey's dead. I said, I said, you go get a sharp stick. I said, and I want you to start punching this other monkey with a stick. And maybe he'll jump out of this cage. So old Ronald didn't ask no questions that time. He just went and got a sharp stick. We started sticking that monkey. He jumped out of the cage. He went running across the yard. There's a little edge of woods there, and then some more houses on over the hill there. And he went into those woods. He went off in the sunset. I saw him when he went. Went off in the sunset. And I just kind of smiled. I was glad to see that monkey go. <laughs> Somehow or other, I could picture old Bertha somebody standing in her kitchen washing her dishes and looking out the back that next morning. And her turned around and said, Herschel, lays a monkey in the yard. <laughs> Herschel said, Bertha, you drunk again. <laughs> this, st this story is the truth. And if there's a moral to this story, Honey, if you feel like you just got to have yourself a monkey, get yourself a possum. <laughs> they dumb, but they a whole lot slower. <laughs>